Hey guys, I'm gonna take you with me on a gig tonight. I'm gonna show you everything that I do as a drummer to play a gig. I've put some processes together that help me make it easier and more efficient, but every drummer has the same issue. We've got the most stuff to load up, we're the first ones at the gig, and then we've got the most to tear down, we're pretty much the last ones to leave a gig. So I'm gonna show you everything that I do, so stay along for the ride. So the first step I go through is loading up my gear, but before I do that, I make sure that everything got back in the right cases. I've got a, a large trap case that I use for all my stands, and that pretty much has my stick bag, my stool, all of the hardware that I need to play a gig, and um, all the drums are going in soft cases. So. I check all of that first and then I begin to load up. You can see behind me, I've got my Jeep um, loaded up. But make sure you have everything because you show up to the gig and you don't have sticks or you've got your kick pedal or you forgot cymbals. Um, it's not gonna be fun. So here's a closer look at my gear loaded up. You can see the most important piece here, the trap case. This again has all of my hardware in there, stick bag, um, mic stands if I need them to mic the drums, depending on what setup I'm using, and my stool. Um, got the snare drum right here. Here's my cymbal bag. I've already checked to make sure everything is there. Got my carpet. Uh, this is my utility stand where I can put my mixer for my in-ears, uh, an iPad if I need charts for anything, set list. Um, rack tom, floor tom, and back there is the bass drum. So I've gone through my check and I do have everything for tonight's gig. So now that I have everything loaded up and ready to go, uh, it's only about um, 4.30. You know, I don't have to load in until like 7.30 tonight. So I get everything packed and ready to go so I don't have to do it uh, later on. So at this point, now I'll move on to my next step in preparation for a gig, which is a half hour of warm up um, so that I can get things kind of nice and loose. Okay, so we're up in my studio here. Uh, this is where I'll usually take oh, about 20, 30 minutes and just warm up with rudiments. Um, I have different warm ups that I that I do and, and go through uh, before a show because you want to get everything as loose as possible. And I like to warm up about two hours before I have to be at load-in. All I'm going to do is warm up on the practice pad. You really shouldn't be doing this next to your drum kit because it's tempting to just turn around and start playing some you know, stuff on the kit. But uh, I'm pretty regimented, so I'll spend 20, 30 minutes on the pad right now and then um, we'll go uh, and get ready to, to head out of here and head to load in. So I'm here at the, uh, at the pad. So I'm here at the, uh, at the practice pad and I'll go through a few things, um, including, you know, some simple warm ups like 16th note. Or I'll go through some stuff where I can do 30 second notes, like. So I can incorporate uh, singles and doubles all in the same warm up. So again, I'm gonna spend about uh, 20, 30 minutes here and then uh, we'll get ready to head out. So I'm getting ready to head out to load in soon. And I've got one more piece that I always need to bring with me and that's my utility bag. So here's my utility bag. And uh, what I keep in here is my iPad for any charts I might need. I've got my personal mixer. So I use an inner system, uh, but I just basically take an aux out of the board and run it to this mixer so I can just do my own volume from here and some slight EQ on the whole mix. Um, I've got mic cables. Uh, tonight I'm using a scaled down miking setup where it's just kick and snare. So I'm just bringing a few cables to do that. Um, what I also keep in here is my earbuds uh, for the in-ear setup. So I've got those there. I've got different um, extension, uh, headphone extensions in case I have to be a little bit farther away from my mixer. 
I've got a drum key. Um, I also have a drum key attached to this symbol case too. That's one thing that uh, you never seem to have when you need it. I also have a drum snake that um, when I'm using a full mic setup that I would bring instead of these cables. Okay, I'm in the car and heading to load in. Load in's not till 7.30, but um, I like to beat the guys by at least 20 minutes so that I can get all my stuff up there and not be in their way. I'll already have my drums set up and ready to go by the time they get there, and then I can help uh, start setting up sound. So let's, uh, let's head to the venue. Okay, so I just got to the venue and Typically, uh, what I do first is I'll just go take a look in there. Um, I'll bring my carpet first and I'll take a look at the stage, kind of check it out, see what I'm working with. And uh, from there, um, I'll just start bringing stuff in. So let me show you, uh, let me show you what that looks like. So just grabbing my, uh, my carpet here. Always loading in at the back door. <laughs> so, carpet. Let's check out the stage first and uh, see what we're working with. So it's a fairly sizable stage, so I'll, I'll be about center of stage. So what I'll do right now is uh, lay down the carpet there and start bringing in the other stuff. So now I'll start bringing in everything and uh, get the drums just at least uh, stage side so I can start assembling things so one thing i want to point out with drums is um get these soft cases you can see got these handles so i can pretty much carry almost all of my drum kit at one time there's my helper for tonight look at we load him up with as much shit as he can carry so i don't know if you can see this but i've got the kick drum got the snare drum got another tom uh yeah the big case but hang on i need to help you with that so it's lucky I got some help tonight to bring in all my stuff. But uh, I only got one more trip and then we're basically done bringing everything in. So it's nice if you can get help. So it might be hard to see it here, but one of the things I do is I mark where all my stands go. And you can see these circles. If you look here, it's kind of dark because everything's black. So this isn't the best lighting, but you can see these circles and they're all numbered. Um, so you can get some more light, you can see here that where everything's gonna go. So this will drastically speed up my setup time because I don't have to worry about where it goes. I just put it down where it's already marked. So I'm gonna start setting everything up, taking things out of the cases. That's gonna take me about 10, 15 minutes since I have everything kind of pre laid out. I use a towel in between all my stand levels, uh, layers, so that um, they don't scrape each other up. So I've got everything packed in really nice. And now uh, it's just time to get everything out. I've got the drums out. Now I just uh, gotta start setting up stands and get them out there. This took me about eight, nine minutes to get to this point. Now I just gotta put symbols on and I'm basically set up. Again, I can't tell you enough. Get um, these markers, get a close up on it. They're numbered, but they really pay off. As you can see, all I had to do was just get them in the vicinity of those circles and your setup is pretty much done. So that's time saver number one, probably the most important. The brand I got is uh, Protection Racket. You can get those on Amazon. I think it's like 10 bucks for the set. So the other thing I do is I put a piece of tape at the bottom of each stand so you can see how wide it, it needs to be opened. If you look on here, you can see this blue tape right there. It's kind of hard to see in here. But that tells me how wide I have to open up the legs of the stand. That's a huge time saver. I also will mark angles. So I've got this guy right here. So I can line up and make sure that my ride stand is always at the right angle and set up properly. Um, and then I also will mark um, how the second part of the stand is going to come in. So on this stand, I've got a lock right here. So that helps. Um, on the other stand, I actually have some tape with uh, on either piece so I can line it up each time and make sure it's on properly. And again, that saves a ton of time. So I'm gonna get the symbols on and then I'll uh, 
from there, I'll get the other miscellaneous stuff set up. So I basically got everything set up. Um, everything is set and ready to go. All positions are, are where they need to be. And uh, we are just now going to wait for the other guys to get. Okay, so I've got my utility stand set up. So that's basically what it looks like. There's a mixer on here. I got my buds, my iPad. And then there's my, uh, my set list, and this works out pretty convenient because I'm sitting right now at the kit, as you can see. I'm sitting down, and I've got everything right in my reach, so it's perfect. Uh, the other thing I'll keep here is I got a little practice pad, so if I do get time, I always like to still do a little bit of warm-up after I'm done setting up, but that usually doesn't, uh, <laughs> doesn't always pan out. So the guys are starting to roll in. Uh, once the PA gets here, I will start setting up mics and uh, get things rolling. All right, so we've got everything sound checked. I uh, run with the board next to me. So I basically run everything for the guys. If they need anything else in their monitors, it's just easier having it back by me. But right now we're gonna maybe do a little sound check before we have to start playing and just make sure the levels are right. Let me show you the board really quick. So here's a quick little shot of the board. Yeah. All right, so we just got done sound checking and um, here's the stage set up from out here. So everything is good to go and now basically we uh, we wait a half hour and we'll start playing. just finished and now we are going to tear down which is gonna be a real pain in the ass because after playing all night three-hour gig uh, you know tearing down really sucks but um, I did have a I have a contribution you can see blood there's blood on the uh, snare drum so you know it's a good gig all right, so we just finished playing. I'm going out to my car right now to get uh, cases and stuff and uh, start packing up. So it's one o'clock in the morning. We played for three hours and um, now comes the, uh, the worst part of the night, which is just packing all the shit up. So I'm gonna take you through it as much as I can and uh, kind of show you. Not so. sure if you can see all this, but all the cases are back in my car. So I had to bring these into the venue so I can start packing up and uh, I will give you some glimpses of the pack up process. So I'm tearing down right now and you can see I go basically in opposite order, got all the symbols off. So take down the symbols first and then I'll start taking down all the drums, packing them up and just basically reverse the whole process. And all the symbols are down. And I'll start packing up the drums next and putting the hardware in the case. So I got the uh, trap case all packed up already. We are ready to get everything else. Everything else packed up, so on the stage, all you have left is uh, drums. Put those in the cases and then uh, roll up the tank and we're ready to load in to the Jeep and get out of here. So I basically got all the drums packed up. 
You can see here, everything stacked up, ready to go. Now it's gonna fold the carpet and start putting everything in the truck. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, <laughs> I'm carrying basically bass drum, rack tom, floor tom, all because of the soft cases with the handles. So get soft cases if you're a drummer. Um, you can see here, I'm kind of dark, I know. Sorry for the bad video, but I'm holding the bass drum right here. So I'm gonna put this in the, uh, in the truck. You can see here, putting that in like this. And then uh, we got the floor tom right here. Put that in, and I've got pretty much kick floor tom rack all in. Now I have to do is get the snare drum and the trap case that has all the hardware and I'm done. So another three minutes and I'll be ready to head back to the house. Right. So I know it's real dark so you really can't see, but this is the time of night where I just take inventory and make sure I got all my stuff. So I got my carpet, my utility bag, snare drum cymbals. I got the trap case that has basically everything in it. I know I got my kick floor rack. And that's really all I brought in my uh, utility stand. So now what I'll do is I'll take one more quick walk through and just make sure I wasn't missing something because at this time of the night, um, you know, you want to make sure you have all of your stuff. So take one more walk through the venue, make sure you didn't leave something and then you're ready to get out. Oh, but most importantly, get paid first. So I got to wait for the artist to, to pay me, get paid and then uh, head home. John is trying to get it out. There you go. Sometimes you gotta get creative to get the last dollar. So it's 2.20 a.m. I left my house to get to load in at seven. And I'm just getting back at 2.20 a.m. Um, you probably can't see, but I still have all my equipment in here. Uh, in my Jeep and I'm not unloading it tonight so I'll do that in the morning which is very typical for uh, for me um, I'm just I'm too beat <laughs> to do the unload so I'll wait till the morning and, and unload my equipment and uh, get it all a uh, place where it needs to go I'll make sure to show you my loadout uh, tomorrow morning and um, I'm gonna go to bed Okay, so it's the next day after the gig, and this is the time where I'll basically unload everything um, from my Jeep. Now, I do park my Jeep in the garage overnight, just in case the temperature drops. You don't want your drums exposed to that. Um, but uh, I've got it backed in here so I can uh, easily unload everything. So um, typically, I will take my drums and bring them inside, um, uh, but our weather is uh, going to be around 70 degrees, you know, on a daily basis now at this time of year. And um, there's no need. I can keep them in the garage. They'll be just fine. As long as the average temp is around 70, your drums will be just fine. I'll show you where I stack everything up for that. Um, and once I'm done with that, uh, that's pretty much the end of the line. Okay, so you can see uh, it's a little bit of a mess back here, but um, you can see I've got everything stacked up. Just kind of keep it off in a, in a corner. I have a lot of musical equipment, I guess, in here, but um, for the most part, carpet, everything, just in its own nice little corner. Uh, one thing to point out, this is uh, in Texas. That's what you need to play outdoor gigs in the summer. Um, this thing is a lifesaver. Um, I don't go anywhere without it in the summertime. Okay, so I've wrapped everything up. All my gears put away where it belongs, and I have all my gears, so that's always a good thing. Um, but now you've seen what it takes for a drummer 
to play a gig. There's a lot of work and a lot of hours that are involved, but I do it because I love playing drums, I love playing live, and I play with a great group of guys, and that's what makes it worth it. So, to wrap everything up, what I thought I would do is go over my top 10 tips for a gigging drummer. These are tips that I went over in the video, but I like to sum it up, and hopefully it helps you be more efficient and have more fun playing gigs as a drummer. Okay, so tip number one, pre-mark your carpet. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. As you saw in the video, I use the protection racket Velcro circles. You can buy those on Amazon. I think they're between 20 and 30 bucks, uh, but it is a huge time saver. They stick onto the carpet really well. They don't move. So it will dramatically reduce your setup time. What I used to do was buy, I bought some gaffing tape and I would cut little uh, squares uh, from the gaffing tape and then stick it under each one of the stands. That works, however, um, I noticed that the tape would eventually move after a couple gigs because you're rolling up the carpet, you're putting your stands on there, just kind of shifting it around, and I would have to redo that about every five or six gigs. So it's kind of a pain. Spend the extra money, get the protection racket, um, Velcro circles, and you'll be glad you did. Okay, tip number two. Use soft cases if you can. Um, you know, if you're on the road quite a bit and you're putting your drums in a trailer, maybe soft cases aren't um, such a good idea. I've done it, um, but I highly recommend the soft cases because they have straps and you can literally carry almost your whole kit all at one time. It saves you a lot of time. Tip number three is have a system. I actually went and wrote down my set up and tear down the system so that I could just keep repeating that for efficiency. When you have a system um, of set up and tear down and how everything is going, you're gonna go in your trap case, I layer everything so I know which, which stand goes in which layer. It just makes it super easy and then eventually it just becomes mindless where you're just so used to doing it. So write it down and keep repeating that process and pretty soon you'll just train your, your mind. <laughs> To do it so you don't have to think so much. Number four is keep things in the same place. So whether it be at your house, in your car, in cases, be sure to put everything in the exact same spot every single time and that will help you narrow down on forgetting things. Um, it's the worst uh, feeling in the world to show up to a gig and not have your drumsticks. So what I do is everything that goes in my trap case, it, it's always the same things that go in the trap case. I put all of my um, equipment in the same spot as you know, as I showed in my garage and also in my gig bag. I have the same things in there every single time. So make sure you're consistent and keep things in the same place and that should help you narrow down on forgetting things that you're gonna need at a gig. Okay, tip number five. Load up a couple hours before you have to leave. I do this so that I'm not so stressed uh, loading up 10 minutes before I have to leave for load in. Um, it's nice because you get everything in there uh, a couple hours before you actually have to leave. You're not rushed. You have time to double check everything. And then it's already in the car. So highly suggest loading, in, loading up your car at least a couple hours before you have to leave. And tip number six is be early. As a drummer, it's so much easier to get your stuff set up when everybody else isn't there. <laughs> so um, one thing this, this helps you with is that they're not in your way. The other guys aren't in your way while you're trying to set up and get your cases everywhere. But also you're not in their way while they're trying to get their gear loaded in and set up and sound set up and all that. That stuff. So I usually get there at least a half hour before the other guys do, as I mentioned in the video. Tip number seven, um, help with sound. Um, typically, uh, with a lot of the gigs that we play, we do our own sound. Uh, it's very rare that we have a house, house sound system. So I always help with sound. In fact, I have the board actually backed by me so I can control monitor mixes for everybody. It's just easier because I can have it stationary next to my kit uh, where the other guys would have to walk back to the board. Um, but help run cables, help everybody get uh, things mic'd, 
and just help them get it run back to the board. I always um, do sound check for everybody, so I'm taking levels and all those kinds of things. It just makes it move along quicker because, again, you've already got there before them and you're already set up. So lend a helping hand. Everybody will really appreciate that. Tip number eight is reverse your process at teardown. So um, whatever you did for setup, just do it in the opposite order and you will cut down a lot of time at teardown. As we all know, after the gig, that's the worst part of playing a gig <laughs> is tearing down because no one feels like doing it. But if you follow your process in reverse, it will save you a lot of time. And again, it's muscle memory. You'll get to a point where it's kind of mindless. You, you just do it because that's the same process you go through over and over again. And it will narrow down on you forgetting equipment. Okay, and tip number nine is always check your gear. So make sure you take inventory, but also make sure that no nothing got broken. Um, everything is still in working order because uh, if you don't do that and something was broken or missing, when you get to the next gig, it's re you're really not gonna be very happy. And then I always take one more walkthrough of the venue, even if I know I have everything packed up. I still walk through one more time because you never know. One of your other guys might have left a piece of their equipment on the stage. So always take that extra minute, walk through the venue one last time before you head out. Okay, and the last tip, tip number 10 is be a good hang, okay? Just be a good guy to be around, be fun, be helpful, be directive. Be the guy that everybody wants in their band and you will continue to get callbacks for gigs. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Please stay tuned for more videos like my live drum cam videos, lessons and more. Thanks for watching.